Hello, here's Gabriel with a Tesla Powerwall install. And in this case, it was a nice house with a big service. Uh, they were able to accommodate three Powerwalls with their usage. Let's go through this gear and uh, I'll show you how we wired it up. So this Tesla gateway is the main panel that interfaces with the batteries and it has interrupted the service wires so from the meter you can see those wires go now into the gateway and they feed this main breaker here and then the Tesla gateway feeds this inner this uh, disconnect here which load side then feeds the main panel again. Let's take this panel off. And there we have it. You see the new wires coming in and going into the top of the panel. What used to be here was just the wires from the meter going into the top of this breaker. And uh, there's another sub panel inside that's fed by these pass-through lugs. So this is a whole home backup. And the reason we have this extra disconnect here is so that we could tap on between the two 200 amp breakers. I used these two port lugs and I, I just passed one conductor through and I landed my solar taps on the other lug. I found this to be a better connection than the piercing connectors I showed you in another video. This is a much more solid connection and we won't have any troubles like we did with the piercing connectors. This is the CT for the Tesla gateway to measure the solar production. And that CT is plugged in up here for CT1. You'll notice CT1 monitors line 1 and so my solar CT is around uh, my line 1 solar conductor. So let's go to the big disconnect here. Since we have two 10K inverters, we're back feeding about up to 120 amps. And so we have to have a big 200 amp disconnect. Our utility requires a big handle instead of just a breaker. So our combined solar conductors from the grid side are feeding the top here. We've got 125 amp fuses. And then the load side feeds the load side of my production meter because the solar has to feed the line side of my production meter, the top. So then the conductors from the solar go through another disconnect. And again here you see the grid connection is in the top and the inverters are considered a load even though they produce power as well. Here's the two breakers for our solar inverters. One 60 amp breaker for each 10k inverter. And inside those inverters there's two strings of solar panels going to each inverter. Let's go down to the batteries and I'll show you those. Oh, uh, before I do, let me show you the disconnect up here. So this 100 amp disconnect is the feed from the batteries. There's three power walls about 200 feet away, so we used oversized wire, one aught copper. Even though uh, three batteries, each one on a 30 amp breaker, technically would have needed number one wire, but we're using one aught because it's a long run and we didn't want voltage drop. Similarly, the communication wire from the batteries. Uh, because it was such a long run, we used some 16 gauge shielded twisted pair communication wire. And this top connector here, you can see the power wall communication, one, two, three, four, starting from the left. And uh, this little aux jumper is the shutdown. If we needed an emergency shutdown, we would wire an emergency e-stop button instead of that jumper. But since this is accept accessible from outside, 
we can just shut off our batteries using that disconnect and we don't need to add an extra button using that jumper. Now then, let's go to the garage and I'll show you the power walls. And here we have the power walls in the carport. You can see the combined feed from my 100 amp disconnect feeds the top of this panel. And then three 30 amp breakers feed my three power walls. And here you see this enormous communication wire also for the four communication wires needed by the power walls. Let's look in one of these battery compartments. So in the last battery here you see that we have our termination resistor on the output and we have the three or four uh, input wires coming from the battery previous. We've landed the shield and drain wire along with our ground in the ground lug of the battery that the communication cable is going to. Uh, we use the included lever nuts from Tesla to hook up the power. And uh, yeah, so the communication goes in to one and then there's a little jumper that comes with the stack kit to jump from one to two. And then again from the output of two to the input of three and then a termination resistor on their last battery. So right now these power walls are charging and we've set them to 30% backup buffer. He'll be using the power all except the last 30% which he'll save in case there's an outage. Uh, yeah, this was a fun big job. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Have a good day.